Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start, at least, on my review of Served Cold, a horror tube anthology edited by Regina St. Clair and Steve Donahue. Full disclosure, I have a story in this called Black Solstice. Uh, it's the last story in it, which kind of makes it easier for me, actually, because I can just read the book and then not read my own story and then just sort of rate and review what I've read. Um, uh, but obviously do take that with a pinch of salt because I'm sure I am biased. I'm going to try not to be. As always, I'm going to read the blurb, take you through my tabs, and then give you my overall thoughts and rating at the end. I will say I'm still in the process of reading this, so I'm currently up to Marie McWilliams' story. Um, in fact, I'll go through now and tell you who's in it. But yeah, I'll uh, be doing this much, almost like a reading vlog, a hybrid review and reading vlog. Dane reads... So we have The Forward by Steve Donahue, Caracan Colos by Cameron Chaney, The Rescue by Janine Pipe, Red Albums by Cam Wolf, Magic in the Hat by Donnie Goodman, Isolation by NM Brown, Sweep in the Side Street by A.B. Frank, Frostbite by Alfie Tobert, Blackwood by Marie McWilliams, Cold Crossing by Jacob Payton, The Cold Traps by Steve Donahue, This Grey Winter by Mihalis Giorgio Starthis, Orpheus Descends by Andrew Lyle, The Woods and Mr. Softy by R. St. Clair, Thou by Merz Sumida, Lake Alice by Michael Taylor, Ensnared by Aphrodite Lee, The Walkin by Mike DeFrench, Snowboy by Ryan Stroud, Revival by Madison Estes, Fractals by D.L. Tillery, Water of Life by Gloria McNeely, and Black Solstice by myself, Dane Cobain. So, let's go through and check out some tabs. So we'll start with Caracan Colos by Cameron Chaney. This is set in his realm, uh, Autumn Crow. So you might have read the, the books from that. And um, I just like this little line because there's a little nod to A Christmas Carol, which is very appropriate for a horror, th you know, a winter themed horror collection. His jaw fell open as though he no longer had control over it. He was like Marley from A Christmas Carol. The handkerchief had come untied. A low groan somersaulted out of his mouth and slithered across the floor, up Angie's legs. And then character in this called Brian, he has this thought, which I thought was a weird one. He goes, uh, should he call and ask someone to bring him to a hospital? Well, hospitals even open on Christmas. Well, I just would have thought it was fairly commonly known that, of course, they are, because otherwise you'd just be turfing people out with... Like, people don't just... In fact, I think, if anything, probably there are more accidents and stuff on Christmas. My mum used to... My, well, to be fair, my mum was a nurse, so I grew up with her working Christmas days. So, you know... But um, yeah, he also says he couldn't afford a ride in the ambulance, so that was out of the question, which uh, he says he'd rather bleed out than even look at a bill of that man magnitude, which I just thought was interesting because obviously I'm from the UK, so we have uh, free healthcare here. So on to The Rescue by Janine Pipe. Um, there was a typo in this. It says, uh, with did not bode well for the next six weeks, and it should be which did not bode well for the next six weeks. Uh, Cam Wolf, Red Albums. So I just like the line here, he goes, it was still dark, too dark to see through the room. And I was just thinking of knocking on heaven's door. It's getting dark, too dark to see. I did enjoy this story though, it was a good one. Magic in the Hat by Donnie Goodman. I really enjoyed this story actually. We have uh, in this the PKG, the Privileged Kids Gang. Um, and they go around, they decide to wreak some havoc in the neighborhood, you know. There are snowmen in this one as well. Then we have Isolation by N.M. Brown. Um, inter interesting story about a guy who goes to meet somebody he met on a Discord server, which makes it very 21st century and very YouTube-y, actually. And there's some great um, music in this one. So um, you get the percussion of Pink Floyd's Welcome to the Machine, which is a, a cracking song. And there was a typo in this one as well. It says, it felt like the entire care itself was locked in place. It should be the entire car. Uh, and then a reference to One is the Loneliest Number by Harry Nielsen, I believe, which is, again, a beautiful song. Very sad, though. And then we have Sweep in the Side Street by A.B. Frank. I thought this was cool. I didn't tab anything out in that one, um, but I thought it was cool because it very much reflects A.B. Frank's interest. It's, uh, you know, on his YouTube channel, he does a lot of gaslight, uh, fantasy and gaslight horror, and you can tell from his story. And then we have Frostbite by Alfie Tober as well, which is another one of the ones that really stood out to me. Um, and it's got a lot of those, like, uh, you know, Arctic Explorer vibes and the whole, I'm going out for a walk, I may be some time. So at the end of Ryan Stroud's sto story, uh, Snowboy, <laughs> there's just this very heartwarming line where this kid kind of supports his dad and he says to his dad, I'm glad you came for me, I'm glad you found your balls. And he goes, me too champ, me too. Great ending to that story there, especially in the context of it as well. 
And then we have Revival by Madison Estes, Fractals by D.L. Tillery, uh, Water of Life by Gloria McNeely. I did really enjoy Gloria's story, actually. And then Black Solstice, which is my story. Uh, and then we get the About the Authors. And I just tabbed one last thing here I wanted to share, um, which is uh, Madison Estes' biography. Uh, she will be a contributor in the Complete Guide to Writing Horror Volume 1, Dragon Moon Press. Which is very cool because Dragon Moon published my novella, No Rest for the Wicked. Sneaky little plug there. So yes, yeah, Serve Cold, edited by uh, Regina Sinclair and Steve Donahue. I didn't think it was quite as good as uh, Local Haunts. Although what I will say is that I think the theme worked really well for this one. I think you could read this not knowing the title, not knowing the theme, and you would figure it out for yourself what the theme was, you know? Um, so I thought that was quite cool. And um, it's quite a nice little like narrative arc just through the, the uh, order of the stories as well. That works really well, I think. So yeah, overall, I gave it a four out of five. Uh, would recommend, obviously. Um, I still would, even if my story wasn't in it. Um, especially because the proceeds go to charity. So you're supporting indie writers, you're getting some badass horror, proceeds go to charity. Win-win, you know? Win-win-win, in fact. So yeah, there you have it. That's what I made of Served Cold. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.